Um, Marvel and X. Chapter 2 has been out for a while now, and it's time for me to tackle it. I know I haven't reached those 5 likes, but after some discussion, I'm going on any. Anyway. Like before, if you haven't watched the original, I'll link it below. Also for those who never watched my part 1, I'll link that too. Now, let's go on with the rewrites. Let's start with the title card. It needs to be there a few seconds longer, just so that it stands for a solid five seconds. Why? Because it goes a bit too quickly. By the time it becomes clear to read, it gets destroyed. Something simple, but it kind of hurts. Sometimes, the minor changes do a lot. Now, for the actual story. The only thing other than my added fog, I'll also change how the exposition is done. And because I'm planning for their ahead, I want faces on each name they mention. Why does it matter if they're only background characters? That's a waste of time and money. Because if the series is supposed to continue beyond this five-parter, you need a well-rounded background cast to back on every now and again. Since one-offs aren't the best in the long run story-wise, this way we have way more story potential and longevity. We wouldn't have the same characters learning the same lessons or doing the same things for no other reason than them reaching that point of becoming stale. Was that a call out to Friends Up is Magic? Or South Park, or... Eh, it's for shows that are so repetitive that they have to do things so stupidly that they have to... Move on already! I get it! Fine! And stop setting fires! Seriously, PJD. Sorry about that. Back to the story. For now, I'm okay with what they gave us. I'm keeping it. Also, I get the others are giving him looks, but the execution is kinda poor here. Let there be one frame of him smiling, and the other stare awkwardly, or face palming. Preferably both. Then, that's where this next scene comes in. Again, I'm okay with the narrator, and the timing is good here. My only complaint is that they should have his little box in. I forgot about this in the previous one. But this is a motion comic. All the parts of the comic should be shown. The narrator having these little moments would be easier to talk about if we can see what he's saying in a box. But he mentions enemies, which could be useful if we got to see faces. Faces beyond the main cast, that is. In my iteration, Joe is an antagonist slash villain down the road but he shouldn't be the only one. I say in this part, add Joe talking to the others outside with no visible speech bubble since he's out of earshot of the freshmen and have them still be zombied with the fog around. Now mind you, because he isn't controlled, the narrator does have to change up some wording, like asking why is it most students are acting this way? EXPOSITION! I know it's needed, but not really! Part 1 had that terrible intro explaining Override's powers along with the rest of them. If this was only in the comics, it would still need to be tweaked. Here's my version. Have the others question her themselves. Like one of them is scared as a zombie is getting closer and they question her out of fear. Double Time or any of their others will be like, Yo, Emmy, Emmy, Emily, override! What are you doing? We gotta get moving now. These guys are moving in. Then have her like, I'm reading the speakers. Right now they're sending off subliminal messages to the other students. And it isn't the only machine messing with them either. Then you have a third one remark on Override's powers. I forgot you can understand technology just as well as any other language. And then she's like, seriously? Either way, we have to find the source. Then you can have the original bit and have Damien make the same remark as he did before. The other bit can still be the same, but this time Tyrell points out Joe and Alyssa shrugs it off, for now remarking how others 
are still lucky to have them and they'll deal with Joe's phenomenon later. Everything's the same, but add in the little bit of Emily needing to find the other thing and them needing to make sure they are away from the zombies for now. Uh, I'm gonna get a teeny bit loud. No, I get that he's excited and all, but, but that face, no, 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 and that ain't the only face, that ain't the only face! Snugglejass.exe has stopped working. We'll reboot her after this. Wait, does that mean- Crap! Moving on. Man, her whiting is atrocious. She's fine up until, uh... Wait, what is this about Claw? Little side note, most people don't know who Marvel's Claw is. Because so many souls have a generic villain named Claw. Of course not spelled the same way, but still, it applies. The average person wouldn't know, but many Marvel fans would. Is his portrayal here any good? Hell if I know, I barely know the guy. Here's my two cents on it. It's okay to use older established characters, despite what some people think. Gonna change it. It's simple and it gets its job done. We're keeping it and wait, that's pretty much the end. Where's part three? Not out yet? You got to be kidding me!